your girl Becky and I'm here to talk about my favorite product for urban sketching, the Art Toolkit Pocket Palette. I've been using this palette for over a year now and it is my favorite product to take outside to do some urban sketching. You may have seen one or two of my videos and if not, a lot of them are on my channel. This is the most compact watercolor setup I've ever had and ever used and it is my absolute favorite when it comes to urban sketching. I'd like to start with one small caveat and that no one product will get you to do something you want to do unless you actually do it. So having this set will not make you sketch more. You literally have to just pull out your sketchbook and do it. That being said, I actually started urban sketching with just a pen and a sketchbook of this size. And most of it is just getting used to drawing in public, getting used to pulling out your sketchbook, opening it up to a blank page, and start putting some scribbles on it. It does take a bit of time to get used to it because you're just really used to sketching in the comforts of your own home. It's a little bit daunting, so take your time, get used to it, see if you like the process. And if you do, then maybe it's time to explore some tools that can make that process a little bit more enjoyable and simpler for you. This video is going to be quite an extensive review of every art toolkit product I own. I don't have a whole I don't have the whole product line, but I have a good chunk of them. So I would like to share my experiences with y'all. And there are some timestamps if you are eyeing a certain product and you just want to know a little bit more about how it behaves feel free to skip over to there. A quick intro about Art Toolkit is that these products are designed for outdoor use. The founder, Maria Coriel Martin, aka Expeditionary Art, was looking for something to support her sketches in the great outdoors. She's not doing urban sketching, she's doing like hardcore going to the Arctic, going to extreme temperature sketching. And whatever she had was rusting, so basically what she did was she tried making a palette for herself and it ended up being this wonderful product that does not rust. Because surprisingly, a lot of products rust and with watercolor, you're using it with, well, water. So not rusting and having a smooth surface for you to mix your paints on without the mix being all beaded up is something that was really important and something that was brought into this palette. So I really, really love that. So we're going to start off with the pocket palette. The pocket palette is the most basic standard palette in the Art Toolkit product line. This is a centimeter ruler. It is a little bit under 9.5 centimeters. It is a little bit under 11.5 centimeters when open and a little bit under 6 centimeters when closed. But the insane thing is how thin this is. This is only 0.7 centimeters or 7 millimeters thick. It weighs really light. Without the paint, it's supposed to weigh about 50 grams, a little bit under. With paints, it's slightly heavier. It is rust proof. It contains various sizes of pans, which are all magnetic. So you can customize them, add them in, put in all the different sizes, and they all stick really well. They don't drop out. Every single palette you buy comes with this drawstring bag, which I've used to no end. I've got a lot of my stuff in there. Oh look, my fountain pen. And this is where my palette currently lives in my backpack. The Art Toolkit pans come in various different sizes, ranging from the really small mini pan to this extra large pan. For their mixing pans, which has this sort of white mixing surface, they have a regular one and an XL one. So this tiny one holds about 0.5 milliliters of paint. This one holds about four milliliters. This holds about one. And as comparison, this is a half pan from a Winsor & Newton Cotman set. This half pan usually holds around two milliliters. This is a folio pan. And this is twice the size of a regular pocket palette. Just gonna put one here. Gonna put another one here. And as you can see, it's about twice the size and can hold twice as much palettes inside. The folio palette allows for the use of larger pans and I did actually test this out with gouache just to see how it would feel like to draw 
or to paint on these pants mainly because I was really drawn to the really large mixing surface. I was even thinking if they offered a folio where it's just enamel surface and enamel surface, I would buy that in a heartbeat. But this is the closest I can get to it. So I'm currently experimenting with this setup and also this setup to see if I can just use the basic colors and mix how much space I would need in order to do my gouache paintings. This is their pocket art toolkit and this is in the style of grey with blue trim as well as a black pocket palette. This is what the pocket art toolkit looks like in its default configurations. I have used it a few times but I did return everything to the default just to show you guys what's inside of it when you first buy it. It has a watercolor album from Moleskine. It's got thick paper about 200 GSM. It's got a sharpie, it's got a water brush, it's got a plastic ruler, a syringe to fill up your water brush, comes with a pocket palette if you choose to get one with it, and a couple of clips. This is supposed to be a weather resistant pocket. Let me just quickly see if it's waterproof. Just pull out some water from my water bottle and it is indeed waterproof. You can tell by the way the water just beads up on the surface. And once I wipe it clean, there's no more water left. I personally have not used this Moleskin sketchbook because I have one of a similar size that I keep switching around. This fits in perfectly in there, so I've been outside with this. And this watercolor palette, I can even fit two if I'd like. So in the beginning, I actually did have two. I had one that was specially for mixing and one that was for to hold the watercolor paint itself. But then I realized I just need one, so I just stuck with one. I usually fit in some other brushes as well. So this is a travel brush in two different sizes, and it can fit in perfectly here. And I can just close it and zip it up. On to special edition palettes. So I currently have three different special edition palettes, and the reason for that is that I really love the Art Toolkit product. So I'm really confident in whatever products they do offer on their site. So I did pick these up when they were available. The products that are collaborative in nature for our toolkit don't come really often. And they're often sold out really quickly, so I do try to grab them when I can. The first one is a Draw Your World palette in collaboration with Samantha Dion Baker, which is the author of this book called Draw Your World. And here in her book, she does explain how to build a sketching habit for drawing the world around you. And this is the palette that is launched officially to accompany this book. The palette comes pre-made with some watercolors from Greenleaf and Blueberry, an artisanal handmade watercolor company in Colorado. And it comes with all of these colors. So this is the palette. I've lined it with some extra baking paper because the pans tend to get a little sticky, especially in Hong Kong with the humid weather. And this is what the palette looks like. I am a big fan of green leaf and blueberry watercolors. I haven't gotten around to using these because I have their standard watercolor palettes that I use at home. But one day I'll use this and I'm just really amazed with all the colors. So this palette has the typical C and YK, which is the cyan, magenta, yellow, and gray ochre. There are skin tones to make portraits, and these would be the red ochre, yellow ochre, castle earth, and also titanium white. There are also a couple of convenience colors like malachite, green earth, and also taylor green. And there are specialty colors as well, such as the faux gold and faux silver. The second specialty palette also comes from green leaf and blueberry. This is their sketcher set, which they release in this pocket palette form. These are the standard watercolors that I own coming from the sketcher set. So the two do have the same standard 14 colors. And I've gotten to know these a little bit, but man, these watercolors are so packed with pigment that even after a whole year of sketching at home, I've still barely dug the surface of this palette. These are the palettes side by side. If you take a closer look at the pocket palette, same goes with the Draw Your World palette. They are filled to the brim. Just Greenleaf of Greenleaf and Blueberry and her team did not skimp out on any of the paint. And these are really wonderfully made handmade watercolors that actually have a little 
have a good weight to it. And this is the second specialty palette. It comes in the gray version of the pocket palette. And although I prefer the black one, the gray one doesn't hurt because it does set this palette apart from the other ones that I own. Last but not least, this is the Drawn to High Places palette. This is a set in collaboration with Nikki Frumkin of Drawn to High Places. So this is a gold tone palette engraved with mountain art by Nikki. And it's the same mountain art that Nikki put in this drawstring bag. The inside is lined gold as well. I can't remember if this is the default setting or if I've taken some palettes out to switch. It has the same magnetic pens where you can just snap on the palettes into there. And the default set contains 12 5 milliliter Schmincke watercolor paint tubes. I've got a full review and I'll link it down below in the description. Other accessories that I've picked up from the Art Toolkit website is these cross band set, which I have used when I take my sketchbook out and I put my palette here. And then if I'm having a water brush, I just clip it in like so. And if I need a Kleenex, not the Kleenex, but say if I need this, I'll just clip it in there. And this is how I would carry my sketchbooks around. It's really secure. And if I just carry it around like this, nothing ever loses its place. This is the collapsible water cup. It has been used. It has been loved. It's got a really nice snap when you try to open it and close it again. It's made of silicone. And I've used this before. The main reason why I stopped using this is because I switched to a water brush, which means I don't need this anymore. When I didn't have that, I got this cheap version from a local store. It's also silicone. It doesn't have that nice sturdy snap that this one does. But what I like about it is that this has a lid. So I know some people have used the lid as a mixing space in a pinch, but since I have my art toolkit, I never worry about that. What I like about a lid is that when you fill this thing with water and you pour the water out, it's never going to be 100% dry, so the lid just prevents the liquid from spilling over. Now let's talk about watercolors. On the website, they recommend the Daniel Smith watercolor essential set, which has six warm and cool primary colors. But I personally have been using Holbein. This is a 24 set. This is not a full review. I don't know these colors well enough to review all of them. They come in these small five milliliter tubes. I got this secondhand in late 2020 when I was just beginning my watercolor journey because I didn't want to invest in too much. And this is how much I've used it. I sketch quite frequently, even though it's in a small canvas, but I have barely scratched the surface into using this thing. Holbein watercolors, even though they're these little tiny 5 milliliter tubes, they are incredibly packed with pigment. You don't really need that much paint to start painting great stuff. So you don't really need to go out and buy up more sets, buy up more paint, because this alone will last you a really, really long time. If you think this rant is directed towards myself, trust your instincts. I'm trying my best not to buy any new paints this year. And there you have it. My complete review of everything art toolkit that I own. If you want more of these kind of videos, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like this video and share this to all your friends. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!